This is Ultima 4's opening sequence on DOS and on the C64 side by side. We will use this as a showcase for creating animations on the C128's VDC chip. We'll be using Commodore Basic 7 and the VDC Basic extension for that. I'd like to show that the C128 would have been a great machine for games of certain genres that don't require fast-paced arcade action, and also to show how much more powerful the computer is compared to the C64 due to the fact that it features dedicated video RAM. In this video I'd like to cover the part of the opening scene up until the point where the map is unfolded. Let's have a dedicated look again at what this is and as these versions are not running at the same speed, we'll just focus on the C64 version. First we have the Lord British signature, then we have the AND just popping up and then a line is drawn. Origin Systems Incorporated is sliding in upwards from that line, Presents is sliding in the opposite way. After that the Ultima 4 letters appear, not really pixel by pixel, but just in a disturbed way somehow. And finally Quest of the Avatar is growing out of its own center up and downwards. We have seven different animations until here, after that the border of the map is unveiled. Let's get into the code. Number one is the Lord British signature. This is basically just drawing one pixel after the other. It would be quite hard to find out all the coordinates and the order in which to draw each single of them. Fortunately someone else already did that. A lot of the required information for recreating this opening scene can be taken from the Ultima 4T compilation project at GitHub. In Title 0C we can see the code for this starting in line 187. Ergonomy Joe did a great job commenting the relevant parts of the code. The code for the signature is in line 68 and the relevant data for it is in the file data.asm. You can see that this is in hexadecimal notation. The numbers are x and y coordinates in alternating order. I wanted to convert the hex values into plain decimal to use the read statement to read them from data statements, which I did. I converted these from hex to decimal by using spreadsheets. First I pasted the values, then I used the split function to have them as separate values per cell. The hex to deaths function was then able to deal with this. Finally I concatenated the values again and also prepended them with uh, data statements and line numbers ready to be pasted into the basic code. And here's the relevant part in our basic program. We iterate through the data statements until we hit the value 0. 0 was added by me manually as the last value. First value is always the x-coordinate and we add 20 to it just as in the original code. We multiply this by 2 as we are rendering to a native 640 pixel resolution screen, not 320 as in the EGA version. Then we read the Y coordinate and again we modify it just in the way as the original source code does. Now we need to find out each pixel's position inside of the according byte as in VRAM one byte contains 8 pixels. First we divide by 8 and only take the integer part. Second we take the rest of this and subtract it from 7. The lowest bit has value 0, the largest one has value 7. YP contains the final Y position and we have this stored in a lookup table at the beginning of the code. After that, we OR the pixel position into the memory value at the position of the byte. By ORing, we can add pixel by pixel into the relevant byte values. The VMO keyword is part of the VDC basic extension. I will not go into this in detail here, just know that this command reads a value from the specified position in VRAM and applies the new value by means of an OR operation. That's all we need, let's have a look at how Commodore Basic performs here. I didn't explain all the boilerplate code. Uh, what happens is that the VDC basic extension is loaded first and after that a graphics file is loaded. That's not needed for the signature here, but we'll use it a lot right after this. 
You see the signature being drawn pixel by pixel. It's not as fast as the originals, but it works. Amazing, right? After the Lord British signature comes the word AND. That's actually coming from the graphics file that I mentioned one minute ago. Besides the Ultima 4D compilation project, there's another great resource we can use for recreating the opening sequence, the wiki on ultimacodex.com. It has a lot of information on the Ultima games, including technical details about file formats and so on. One of these resources is the file called title EGA, which you can see here. And putting it next to the opening sequence, we see that it's laid out differently. Lord British's signature is not in the EGA file, because it's drawn on the fly. Present is on top, and the horizontal line between origin systems and present is missing. These differences mean that the image is not taken as it is. Instead, it is used as the source for copy-paste operations more or less. So what I did was, I downloaded the title EGA file as a PNG from the website, I converted it to a VDC compatible format, just like I have shown in previous videos already. I'll link them in the description below, please feel free to check these out if you want to know how this is done. Now the VDC file is loaded by the basic program and immediately copied to address 24000 in VRAM. The VDC file itself is also 24000 bytes long. 16,000 bytes for pixel information, 8,000 for color information. So the image is in VRAM, but outside of the visible area, which goes from 0 to 23,999. All we have to do now is to calculate the address space of the area we want to copy. As one large continuous copy operation is much faster than multiple small ones, we just copy four full scan lines, which is the height of the characters. PS is for pixel source, which is 24,000, PD is for pixel destination, and this is zero. AS is attribute source, which is at 40,000, and AD is attribute destination, which is at 16,000. The difference between screen RAM for the pixels and attribute RAM for the colors is also explained in one of the linked videos below. And these two lines of code is really all that's needed to copy data inside VRAM. VMC is a VDC basic keyword and is short for Video Memory Copy. The command takes the source address first, destination address second. After that comes the amount of data to be copied. 320 is 4 scan lines, as one scan line consists of 80 bytes. The 1 and the 0 can also be skipped, we'll cover these in an upcoming video. The first line is taking care of pixels, and the second one copies over the color information. And that's the running program. Not quite as impressive as the signature, but exactly what we want. Drawing the red line comes next, and that should be an easy one. Actually, it's the same idea as for the signature, drawing one pixel after the other. But coordinates are just pixels on a horizontal line, so instead of looking up the coordinates, we can just calculate them inside a for loop. We need to do this twice, because we also need to draw each pixel twice, as the native horizontal resolution of the VDC chip is 640. We could actually put the VDC chip into 320 pixels of horizontal resolution, but that would also halve the color resolution, which is something we don't want. Let's make this a quick one, here's the result. The line is drawn, but it's slow. We can surely optimize this, but I'd like to make that a dedicated topic. Origin Systems Inc. is next. This is also coming from the resource file, but instead of copying it in a single operation, we'll copy line for line. Also, we will need to make sure the animation is running at the right speed. The animation consists of nine steps. First step copies the top line of Origin Systems Inc., but puts it right above the line. Second step copies the top two lines of Origin Systems Inc. and puts it one line above the previous copy operation. That means the source address stays the same, but the amount of data increases by 80 bytes each iteration. The destination address doesn't stay the same, it decreases by 80 bytes each iteration. One other thing is the timing. We set the TI string value to 0 before the loop. 
In the loop, we constantly check how much time has passed. Only if four GIF is passed, we render the next animation step. After that, we reset the i string and increase i, which is our animation step counter. All this ends after the ninth iteration. Before showing the result, let's have a look at the next step too, present. This is basically the same animation. The only difference is it is sliding in from the top, but we do the same thing here, really only source and destination address calculation are changed. And we only have five animation steps as opposed to nine. Each animation is supposed to take a bit less than one second, one second equals 60 chiffies. So I settled for four chiffies per animation step. This makes sure the animation is always running at constant speed. And for this animation, maybe you recognize that the VIX screen isn't blanked, so this is even running smoothly in slow mode at 1 MHz. Next up is the word Ultima 4. And given the way it's brought onto the screen, this is probably most interesting to see how it's done. Unfortunately, I have to admit I wasn't able to figure out what's going on here. The code dealing with this is written in assembly language and while I'm not a pro when it comes to that, I usually can figure out the more simple things. Apparently, to me, this wasn't such a simple thing. Still, there is something interesting going on here when copying the Ultima 4 caption. In the invisible source graphics, present is on the top, not at the position where it finally appears on the visible screen. Also, we have always copied full lines as next to the assets we only had black borders. But looking at the assets from that perspective, there is an overlap between Ultima 4 and Present. So we can't just copy over Ultima 4, as this would overwrite Present with blank pixels. I didn't check if that was a problem in the DOS version 2, so I just found a solution to that on my own. After copying Present to the visible part of the screen, I also copied it in the invisible part. Now, when copying in Ultima 4, we are really overriding present with itself. This could become a problem once we figure out how to make Ultima 4 appear in the nosy way it's supposed to, but for now this will do. So before bringing in the Ultima 4 logo, we copy present into it and then just copy the whole thing to the visible area. That's not as impressive as I'd hoped for. Now, if you have a clue what's going on here and can explain it to me, please leave me a comment. I'd love to fix this in an upcoming video. Chances are that this isn't so easy to do in BASIC for performance reasons, but we will see. And now for the final part, Quest of the Avatar. This is a copying animation again, and this time it's a combination of the previous slide-in animations. The text is growing out of itself, if that's the right way to put it, so it originates in the middle and grows to the top and to the bottom. Basically, this just means that we're doing one animation above this virtual middle line and the other animation below it. The code doesn't have any time limitation so far, as it's running at OK speed, just as it is. In the comment on top, you can see some notes about coordinates and which lines are covered by which animation step. Nothing else to see here, and as this was the last step for this video, let's just view the full sequence. So that's what we have so far, and considering that the majority of the coding was done in Commodore BASIC, I think this shows pretty well what a great machine the 128 is. A couple of things are still missing from this opening sequence, on one hand, the little animated creatures that appear on the top of the screen. This will allow us to see how recurring animations can be implemented on the 128's VDC chip. And of course the map and the units working on it. The map will allow us to take a look into tile-based rendering. If you like this, please consider liking and subscribing to the 8-bit theory. Thanks for watching.